Hey, um, hello everyone. So tonight I'm going to make some silly, easily disprovable points about why the Chinese Communist Party's rule of China has been really good for China, even though it's been really, really bad. And you guys are going to eat it up and give me a standing ovation, okay? Wow, you guys are sure dumb. <laughs> Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your China apologist, Chris Chappell. China has changed so much in the past decade. Sure, there are problems, but China today is economically prosperous, millions have been lifted out of poverty, people have greater freedoms, and overall, the one-party rule by the Chinese Communist Party has been a great thing for China. And it will only get stronger. Wow, I wish I had one of those things for the TED Talk in June with Eric X. Lee. And while my initial reaction was to like him because of his cool sci-fi middle name, he spent 20 minutes on stage telling the TED audience why China's one-party rule is better than democracy and the Chinese Communist Party is great. That doesn't seem like ideas worth spreading to me. Eric X. Lee is a venture capitalist from Shanghai. In other words, he's one of China's few elites instead of, you know, a fruit vendor getting his head stomped on by Chen Guan. That means for him, China's not a bad place. That's why he's one of the Chinese Communist Party's biggest apologists. For him, the iron-fisted rule of the Chinese Communist Party is a good thing. All along, the CCP has been improving China, and as one-party rule gets stronger, so too will China. Except not. He begins his argument by saying the West should not be dogmatically pursuing universal democracy. Democratic countries face corruption, economic woes, and a host of social and political problems. But hey, you know what doesn't have any of those things? China, ruled by the CCP. He makes the worn-out claim that China has its own unique culture, and therefore democracy wouldn't work. Socialism with Chinese characteristics, as China's leaders say. Okay. I hate that whole China has a different culture argument. China is ruled by the Communist Party. Communism came from the West. That's not Chinese culture. The party spent decades wiping out that 5,000 years of traditional Chinese culture and now pretends to be the champions of Chinese civilization. The party is not Chinese. Mr. Li gives three reasons why China's one-party rule is superior to democracy. Adaptability, meritocracy, and legitimacy. And each one of his arguments is so stunningly fraught with holes and a shocking unwillingness to look at reality that your head might explode. Adaptability. Look at how much China has changed since the party took power in 1949. There was land collectivism, the Great Leap Forward, quasi-privatization of farmland, the Cultural Revolution, Deng Xiaoping's reform in opening up, and Jiang Zemin allowing business people to join the party. First of all, using Jiang Zemin, one of the guys behind the Tiananmen Square massacre and the mastermind of the attempted genocide of 100 million Chinese Falun Gong practitioners as proof that the Chinese Communist Party is a better system than democracy is stupid. But his basic point is that the party has been able to try radical things and change when something doesn't work. I mean, yes, yes, why can't the U.S. be more like that? What I want from my government is to launch disastrously murderous campaigns and fix it with more disastrously murderous campaigns and trust them to eventually get it right. Just give them time, they'll figure it out eventually. The famine caused by the Great Leap Forward killed tens of millions. The Cultural Revolution was a spasm of violence and people became mango-worshipping nuts for a decade. These are his proofs of adaptability? 60 to 80 million Chinese people have died unnatural deaths since the CCP came to power. Sure, policy changes, from something bad to something worse. But hey, things are getting better, right? China's the world's second largest economy, and that's thanks to the CCP elevating the Chinese people out of poverty after forcibly destroying the economy and forbidding people from owning property. It's like when you chain a guy up in your basement, starve them to the brink of death, and start feeding them again. That's what the party has done for the Chinese economy. Which brings us to Li's next point, meritocracy. In China, you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps more than anywhere else. You move up based on merit. Just ask all the princelings. Mr. Li has said, most can live where they want and work as they choose, except under the household registration or hukou system, where if you move out of your area, you have no access to health care and your kids can't go to school. Go into business without hindrance as long as you know the right people and are willing to engage in bribery, and local officials just don't come in and bulldoze your shop. Travel within and out of your country. 
Unless you're Huang Zhisong, the Chinese editor of Wikipedia who's been told he can't leave the country until 2016, or your Tibetan writer Wu Sir, and the government won't give you a passport to travel overseas. And get this, openly criticize the government online without retaliation. Yeah, because anyone who's taken down for what they say online are just accused of spreading false rumors and inciting public discontent with the government. Like these two grassroots Weibo users who said Lei Feng, the young soldier paraded by the CCP as a good Samaritan decades ago, was nothing more than a phony puppet. It's ironic, on the very same TED page that has his talk, there are links to Facebook and Twitter, which are banned in China. If the irony is just too terrible, you can watch his talk on YouTube, which is also banned in China. Mr. Li said in his TED talk that the system of meritocracy is so strong in China, most U.S. politicians, like Barack Obama, wouldn't even get as far as a small county manager. Really? Well, I think the opposite is true, too. I don't think Chinese politicians would get very far in the U.S. Consider Bo Xilai, who skyrocketed to the top of the party through terrorizing journalists and lawyers and throwing countless citizens in jail without an ounce of due process, very possibly overseeing the forced organ harvesting of still-living prisoners of conscience, somehow afforded giving his son an expensive overseas education in the U.K. and the U.S., as well as owning a 50% share in a French villa off a public servant's salary, and whose wife confessed to murder, and who has himself just been put on trial by political rivals who want to take him down. Yeah, I don't think Barack Obama has the merit to win in that kind of political system. And the final point, legitimacy. People in China love the party, based on data collected by the party. 85% are happy with the direction of the country, and China's state-run Global Times says 93% of Chinese youth are optimistic. Funny, I thought they were struggling to find jobs. I wonder if those 100 million Falun Gong practitioners would agree with these findings. But no, according to Eric X. Lee, state power focuses on containing a small number of individuals who have political agendas and want to topple the one-party system. That's right, these officers in military garb are totally trying to stop these Guangdong farmers in straw hats from taking down the central compound. Lee also says, every year there are tens of thousands of local protests against specific policies. Most of these disputes are resolved peacefully. Actually, there are closer to 200,000 protests per year, and I'm not sure what his definition of peaceful is, but yeah, no, I don't think this qualifies as peaceful. But the economy, the economy, the economy. Let's put that one to rest. 70% of China's wealth is owned by 0.4% of China's families. And that was back in 2006. Now, the gap is even wider. The top 70 members of the National People's Congress are worth $89.8 billion, which is 11 times what the entire U.S. Congress is worth. If China's economy was doing so well, why are so many high-ranking officials moving their wealth and families overseas? China's very own Ministry of Commerce estimates that between 1978 and 2003, about 4,000 corrupt officials left China, taking with them at least $50 billion. No, Mr. Li, I think the very things you're saying are proof that the CCP is only getting stronger, like the increase in dissension and protest, is actually a sign Chinese people are fed up with the one-party rule. There was one statistic Li cited that I actually agree with, though. 82% of respondents said they were optimistic about the future. I am too. A future without the Chinese Communist Party. But what kills me is after 20 minutes of this, the audience gives him a standing ovation. Li has them eating out of his hands, laughing their self-satisfied laughs. Now... Oh yes, he's making fun of George W. Bush. Let's applaud. <laughs> That's so common of an argument. The U.S. can't criticize China because the U.S. does bad things. But look, if you don't like how things are run in the U.S., you can write about it. You can talk about it. You can go to Washington, D.C. and hold a protest about it. Try that in China. So what do you guys think about Mr. Eric X. Lee saying a one-party rule by the Chinese Communist Party is better than democracy? Comment below and keep your eye out for a special event I'll be hosting on the Facebook page. Thanks again for watching. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.